2019, it's a championship team, huh? And I'm Kawhi at the baseline. You showed her a dime, but she dropped dimes. I told her I waste my time. She call it a crime. I can never recline. I'm bliggity bliggity without shine. Making the gather press for wine. But it's bliggity open up your mind. Well, you just leave me city boat to hit the highway. Hit the trans can. He be my way by Friday. I'm on my killer cam. Trying to show him how this crime pay was bricks in my fender. Now it's bricks in my driveway. Hit him with them brazy bars. Who this shit is hard. Slap a hole with 50 large. All right. Here with Sidrell. How are you, man? Where are you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm just at home right now, you know, in the GTA, in G outside of GTA right now, actually. Yeah. Do you go back and forth between the East Coast and here? Well, um, not since um, COVID, man. I probably, I was down <laughs> home once this year. That's about it. Once the past year. Yeah. Because it's hard to get back and forth with COVID, but any other year, I would be down probably every other month. I'm in Scotia or I'm here or something like that. I'm trying to be out west, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is this, has this affected your music at all has this how like obviously you saying that you would go back home was yeah. this has this stunted your progress at all your ability to make uh, new songs or anything no nah, because um, i'm based in toronto right like um, my music is based in toronto my studio is actually in mississauga and stuff right so like mm -hmm. um it doesn't affect like when i go home it's more to promote music or be back home right and get, get some of that vibe and stuff like that but when i'm over here it's all work man <laughs> yeah so what's the feel like with your group um, through this whole lockdown? Is it bothering you guys? Is it stopping you from making as much money? Obviously, you can't do as many do shows yeah. in a lot of places. Yeah, it, it's, it slows down the money, but I guess it uh, it kind of makes everybody more creative if you think about it, right? Because um, some people are figuring out stuff they didn't know they could fucking do and shit. Oh, can I cuss on your channel? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Some people are finding out some freaking shit that they um, didn't know that they could do, right? <laughs> But um, they're starting to do it now, and um, it's it's also good to as an artist to sit back and get some time by yourself to reflect and not have just everything going on at the same time, right? When you're on the road and stuff like that, you don't get a chance to just focus on the music because you're always worried about the club, what's going on with Instagram, how am I looking, videos, um, showing up at this event. But these times are giving everybody a chance to just sit back and focus on music. Yeah, I, I didn't really think about that. That's an interesting mm -hmm. point. Now, how did you? Get started. I think I discovered you with uh, just, I don't even remember. I see, saw Actually, your music yeah, videos. Yeah. Um, the one in the mansion there. And you got okay. the and you got the Caribbean guy in the song. I don't remember the I name of the that song. Shit. That's with um, Race 6. He's another guy on my... Yeah, on my yeah. Name. I follow him too. Okay. Uh, that's a great song. And uh, that's I'm pretty sure that's how I followed you guys. How did you... Did you start as a group? How did you, how did you start with music? Um, me, I was, I was, I started doing music like back in the day by myself, right before I um, had gotten trouble when I was younger, and then afterwards when I um, got back on a different path and stuff, I hooked up with my cousin, which is Fax King. He's also in the same mm -hmm. song, but he produces all my records, right? So um, shout out to Fax King, and then uh, me and him hooked up. And we started just working on music for the Scotia Gang shit, right? And then through that, we. Got a studio in Mississauga, and we started getting other artists coming around, and we started messing with um, Ray Six, which you heard. We have JTMI, that's another guy, and then we have Young 8 to 3. And yeah, you got, over like yeah. three years, it, it formed into a group. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like a lot of people are doing that these days, uh, mm -hmm. working together as a group, sort of just so you can all sort of promote each other. Now, uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's obviously a lot of bad rapper <laughs> out there. Yeah, um, yeah but exactly. The, what, I appreciate about uh, your songs is there's not mm -hmm. a lot of auto tune, which I don't get a lot, uh, a lot these days. I think mm -hmm. I mentioned to you once that I like when you go, you, um, I think it's brazy bars where you go yeah, really like, fast. Go that's mm -hmm. that stuff. That's the sort of stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. um, wh what do you think is like the, the Toronto sound these days? Cause I'm just like it's the other day I was listening yeah. to uh, Cardinal bacardi mm -hmm. slang and i was like oh, i didn't wow. really i wasn't really <laughs> listening to a whole bunch of toronto stuff at that mm -hmm. time but there was a lot of caribbean stuff at that time what do you think is like the sound that's out right now i think we've moved past like sort that's, of like dr crazy. the drake sound but what do you think yeah, you, right yeah, now the, the cardi slang because um even even with drake too if you notice like now the whole the whole slingo in toronto is um based off caribbean slang yeah. right so a lot of the sounds that I'm hearing, I think the Toronto sound right now is it's almost like um, it, it's it's hard it's hard to talk because some kids like I hear them without the without the auto tune, but I hear a lot of kids overusing the auto tune. Everybody's doing auto tune. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to sound like an A boogie or speaker knockers out here or Roddy Rich or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. 
But um, I hear some kids with individual sounds too, right? And I guess it's the slang that differentiates um, Toronto artists from everybody else too. Yeah. When um, when I think about Toronto rap, mm. I think about like there is like there, there's obviously rappers that are involved with drugs and gangs and violence and everything. But I feel like in Toronto, there's a side where there's clear cut where it, it, it's dangerous. Like in Toronto, you might get get shot. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I try to tell everybody, man. Like if if it's it's a it's a um it's like a vibration thing. Like you know, if your vibration is um take Wiz Khalifa, he likes to talk about smoking weed and partying, right? So that's always his vibration. I'll never hear anything about him. But then you get someone like um Snitch Nine or something like that, right? And their whole thing is just like negativity, negativity, and then the negativity comes around you, right? It's, it's rough out there, especially if you're actually in the streets doing this shit, man. You shouldn't talk about it. That's what I say. If you're actually in the streets, um, like talk about it in your music if you want to, tell your story and stuff, but don't like promote it out there, right? Because you're gonna either get the feds or you're gonna get the someone else come up to try and test your gangster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes me think of a uh, Hobson saying that he doesn't, he didn't want to be involved. Somebody came after him and he said, "I don't want to be involved in that stuff at all." And mm -hmm. then on the other side, you've got. Um, What's his name? The sh the the guy who shot uh, the at the girl's feet. <laughs> oh, Tory Lanez. <laughs> yeah, Tory Lanez. Yeah. He had a girl uh, foot ties. <laughs> is is yeah. that sort? Of, does everybody? Does everybody know each other? Does everybody know what really happens when something like that goes down? Or is it is it kind of like a, I mean, he's pretty famous. Is it sort of he, the stuff that a rumor he, just he's, spreads? He's, he's he's famous. So like, it's one of those things where you wouldn't know unless I guess if it happened in Toronto everyone out here would kind of know what the fuck is the real nitty gritty about it. But it happened over in, over in the States and shit like that. So I don't even know. But like when stuff happens with Toronto artists and stuff like chains getting snatched or any of that type of stuff, if it's some street shit, most people will know what's going on. You know what I mean? True, true. And even, even the internet now makes it faster because these kids will post anything. They'll post themselves shooting somebody, you know what I'm saying? So you never know. <laughs> Speaking of stuff uh, in the area that happened, did you see that, uh, that kid that got arrested in uh in Scarborough, he's part of some like car group, um, mm. and and he ended up uh, taking his own life. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. I heard about it though. I heard about it, man. That's sad. Yeah, I'm just wondering, yeah. like, um, like how, like, because I saw on this guy's post, one of the guys who mm. who videotapes it, he's getting like death threats, and uh, these guys yeah. are saying, "Don't come out into the street." Do you? It, does, is that actually happening? Do you think is that actually real? Or the car and the Southeast Asian car enthusiasts ha getting in shootouts? I, I think you want to know what's crazy. Don't don't sleep on the Asians, man. Don't sleep on them, bro. The Asians. I remember um, when I was growing up and stuff like that, and I was living down in Regent Park, right? I grew up around a lot of people in Cabbage Town, right? Like when I first came from Scotia to Toronto, I grew up around a lot of people in Cabbage Town and stuff like that. And yeah, there's some serious guys. <laughs> there's some serious, serious guys. about those cars, eh? Yeah. Fuck, I guess they paid so much money for the car and they souped it up and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Watch so too, many, you... too many movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Fast and Furious ep six through eight or something. Um, yeah. What are you listening to right now? Who are you listening to right now? Um, I'm listening to, other than my, my, my own artists and stuff like that, well, I listen to Ray Six. I listen to Fax Kane. I listen to Young 8 to 3. I listen to JTMI, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that's part of Scotia Gang, everything, I listen to that, right? But I'm um, outside of that right now. Um, I just, I don't know, I'm different. My day goes with my vibe. Sometimes I listen to old school shit. Sometimes I'm listening to rock. Sometimes I'm listening to country. Depends on how I feel that day, right? Yeah. Are you asking me in Toronto who I think is sick? No, just any oh, okay. anybody, because because uh, a lot of the stuff that's coming up on on yeah. my list right right now is Burner. Um, Eminem's new album and I just I was saying this on I another like, podcast like that, that song by Eminem yeah and I yeah. was saying to somebody else the other day that I, uh, I just started going back and listening to the original uh, Wu-Tang uh, members albums like okay. Okay. Meth Method Man's first album Jizz's first mm -hmm. album and I completely forgot how good those were and who's your favorite out of the Wu? Method Man Method okay yeah okay, okay. I've always liked a, a, mm -hmm. a good grimy flow mm -hmm. 
That's why I like those uh, guys, Griselda. Have you heard of them? Yeah, man, I like Griselda a lot. I like I like all those guys, Benny Shaw, Benny the Butcher, all those guys, man. Oh yeah, Conway sure. the Machine's my favorite. I think one Conway's of, the of best. Yeah, I think he's the best. <laughs> so, 2021. Now, what are your what are your plans here? Are we like obviously we're hoping we can do live events again for mm-hmm. everything from music to sports? Do you have a plan of action if that stuff doesn't happen as fast as we all want it to? Just uh, more consistency. Like, um, I got a lot of um, new music about to drop and everything, right? And I, um, I have a lot of visuals that I want to put out. So just more consistency. Just continue pushing in people's faces. I think that's my only thing that I do right now is that I, I wait out between my music a lot, right? Because I'm always mm-hmm. working on things in between. But I just want to start putting out stuff back to back to back to back. And I feel like um, Toronto's doing good enough now that there's about to be another part of... Sorry about that. It's okay. Yeah, there's about to be another part of Canada that's gonna open up, right? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to promote the East Coast and shit. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. show that Nova Scotia style right now. Yeah. How How do you feel about this lockdown? Do you think we should just? What's your opinion on it? Should we have done it? Should we have ended it sooner? Should we have started it sooner? Should we end we it now? Have, I think we should have been more serious about the lockdown. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people were actually getting sick and shit like that, right? But uh, it's, it's, it's tough because when, when jobs are, when people are losing their jobs and stuff like that and the money's not coming in, everyone wants to go out. But also, um, I guess this time is making everybody realize just how important it is to be social, you know? Like when you see how popular Clubhouse is, how popular Zoom has become and everything like that, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone misses being social, regardless. Like a lot of people try to pretend they want to be introverts and everything like that, but everyone misses being outside. For sure. How do you like living in Toronto? Do you do you care about the mayor? Do you think it's a good? He's done a good job. Uh, how do you feel about any of that? Do you have any opinions on that? Uh, Toronto's rough, man. Toronto's rough, <laughs> especially when it comes to politics. Toronto is rough, bro. Because um, it's like it's like the same old story in Canada. I feel like um, a lot of the real issues that are going on, they doll it up so they don't they don't want to really publicize what's actually going on and shit and they try to make it seem like it's better than it is but really it's not right like for the immigrants that come over here it's hard for them just um the poor neighbors and shit like that the systems we got for kids and stuff it's it's rough out there man and people a lot of people uh, what do you think is the biggest problem in toronto for i don't know for around where you live well i don't i don't live in yeah, the, I know. yeah. <laughs> okay okay yeah. okay <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, but where where I used to live growing up and stuff like yeah, I'm past that. But yeah, when I used to live when I was growing up and stuff like that, man, the main problem was just, um, man, the main problem was not having anything to do, like having too much time on your hands and not having anything to do with it. You feel what I'm saying? So like I I, I used to go places when I would travel and go to camp and stuff like that and hear about um kids I would go to camp with and they would say that they have this after school program or this program going on and shit like that right and they always have some story about them traveling here traveling there and I'm like I don't know none about that all I know is when I go home and stuff like that I'm outside hanging out with my friends until we get in trouble right so and there's nothing else to do and nobody really cares because there's nothing else to do how do you feel rap culture and hip-hop culture is right now i feel like it's getting better i mean there's still obviously going to be people be people who are telling their own stories mm. but i feel like as a lot of the rappers get older like uh the exhibits for example or ludicrous yeah. for example i don't see like they're obviously not talking about the stuff they used to be do you mm. think it's go- getting in a better direction and do you think that has an effect on kids who are trying try who are looking up to these people because when i was growing up uh like 50 cent and G unit were obviously mm. big, but they would say that like, even though that we were gang bangers, mm. the, rap, the music is still entertainment and you shouldn't take it. Like you shouldn't want to emulate it. Do you, where do you feel it's, like the culture is now? I feel like um, music is still entertainment. It's always going to be entertainment. Right. But social media is be, is people are starting to blend social media with real life now. Right. A lot of um, young rappers that are coming up and shit, they, they're coming up in, a, in an age where everything, like you're always on camera, we're always on camera. Like anywhere we go, like, you know what I'm saying? Anything we do, we got to put it on camera, right? So you're forced to almost um, either be your music. Like, you know, if you're going to talk that mm-hmm. type of shit, like you have to be your music because everyone's going to see everything anyway, right? And I feel like hip hop right now, it's, um, it's the most popular genre. We know that it's pop and everything like that. But 
unless you're already rich and shit like that, you're going to talk about what your situation is, you know? And a lot of guys, that's the only thing they know. They're just going to talk about the situation. And that causes a lot of problems because the kids aren't looking up to, like, the, like we were saying, the ludicrouses and shit like that. They're not looking up to ludicrous. They're looking up to, like, sorry to say it, they're looking up to, like, top five and idiots like that, you know what I'm saying, that are giving them the wrong influences and shit. So, yeah, I really want to be someone to change that narrative, though. Yeah, do you think it's a big of a problem in Canada? I mean, where where you're from, like obviously these parts in Toronto are terrible neighbor. There's terrible neighborhoods. Uh, how many of those places do you think there are in Canada? Can you compare it at all? Yeah, there's bad places everywhere in Canada. Where I'm from in Nova Scotia is is completely different too. Like it's it's everyone thinks Nova Scotia is rosy, but where I'm from is is de- is bad. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different. It's bad and shit like that. Um, where I'm from in Nova Scotia is North Preston. It's the biggest all-black community in Canada. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, honestly, yeah. And um, the way that we got there is through the Underground Railway and shit like that, right? And then um, mm-hmm. it used to be reserve land, native reserve land. And um, they gave it to us when we first landed in Canada and shit. But that area and areas around it in, like, Dartmouth and Halifax and shit like that, they got gangs, like, all the same stuff they have in Toronto. The kids are shooting each other and shit like that. And then when you go to, like, Montreal or out west, they got the native gangs. It's, it's the same problem everywhere you go. Especially nowadays, it's um, it's more like these kids are all paying attention to what's going on in the States more and more. So, like, it's going to pretty soon, like, the next 10, 20 years, it's going to be just like in the States over in Canada. Every city. <laughs> you think so? Every city. Every city, man. Every city, bro. It's just spreading. I already see it. It's spreading. You have a you have a son, right? I think I saw that. Yes, yes, Adrell Junior. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And for the record, everybody, uh, from what I've seen with him, son, you do seem like a really good dad. But what I wanted to ask you is: uh, is there anything you tell him about this sort of stuff? Uh, well, he's he's still young, so I just try to prepare him on on how to um, know his manners and be a be a be a young man, right? Because he's only going to be five this year. Okay. All right. So he's, he's only young and everything, and I try to keep him away from that type of shit and everything. And then also, like, I, he doesn't live in the city. Like, I don't have him living in the city, you know, just to keep him away from all that. I have him in private school, um, French immersion, right? Yeah, got to do the stuff so that way he doesn't have to live how he lived and shit like that, you know? Mm. Are you more of a guy who thinks it's, it's the environment um, that, that causes trouble, or do you think that anybody has the power to just, to just get out of there and do what they want to do? What, when when you come from a certain environment, okay, well, it's hard. It's like a it's like a step, right? So if we got a set of stairs and everything, and then someone's at the top of the stairs, then we have to make one step. It, it's way easier to make that step. But if you're at the bottom of the stairs and you're trying to walk up the stairs, but every single time you make a step up, um, someone wash decides to wash water down the stairs, make you slip or something like that, or throws a banana or something at you, right? It gets it gets tough. And some people give up and they get comfortable with staying there at the bottom, and some people are like, "Fuck it, man," you know. Me, I'm a fuck it type of motherfucker. Like, bro, I can't, I can't do that shit, bro. I like, I like new things because um, my old thing when I was younger was I would go places, like I was saying, I would go places and see different people or hear about different shit, and I would always want to do it. You know what I'm saying? And then when I would go back home, I would notice that some of my friends would be would feel the same way, but then when we get back home, they get to the same shit, and they don't do anything to change the circumstances. Me, I always wanted to change it, right? So, is there a yeah. favorite place that you have that? uh that you've performed or or maybe not is there is a favorite place, favorite place you like going shit man that i performed yeah my fa- my my best my most favorite performance was my first time i ever performed back home in nova scotia right um and i performed in my hood in north preston and shit and we did it for north preston day so it was a free performance we already had like free floats and everything out there for the kids and shit and, like, it was amazing. And we do it once a year. We didn't get to do it this year, but we're going to do it next year. No, well, we didn't get to do it last year, so we're going to do it this year, hopefully. But um, that was my favorite performance. Best place to visit? Man, it's got to be somewhere sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I was thinking? Um, speaking of Cardinal, I met him when I was an intern for CTV, and I got mm. to work for the Much Music Awards, and I met him there. And I was just thinking, do people still – like, how are rappers getting, uh, how are younger rappers getting their music to people who are already established? Because they used to be hand them a mixtape or like mm. a CD, right? Are, who, are people just emailing or are they just trying well, to DM you and say with a link? 
well, there's, 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 there's smart ways and there's, and there's bad ways to do business too, right? Because it is business, right? So like um, some people are, are reaching through the DMs, but they're doing, um, they're either annoying the fuck out of somebody <laughs> or they're being sincere about the DM and they're messaging so much different people by being sincere and they're waiting until somebody bites, right? And then other people are doing the groundwork and going, figuring out who's in these labels, who do they got to talk, that's us, <laughs> going to these labels and figuring out who they have to talk to, what type mm-hmm. of numbers they need and... So that way you don't um, have to send any unsolicited material and shit, right? Because it, it all depends. I don't want anyone stealing my shit. So I got to make sure that I go through the right avenues to make sure that I connect with somebody, right? And so then... How do, how do the... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, then social... Sometimes social media makes it easy. If you go viral, somebody will reach out to you. You don't have to reach mm-hmm. out to them, right? So how do they quantify it now in terms of numbers? Like, where are they... Like, obviously, before, it would, it would be... Uh, sales or how many people you can draw and how much money you can make but how are they quantifying it now there's so many places you can stream on does somebody have to go and present their uh, like, like their reach numbers from their social media or their streams on all these platforms well some people do um the digital distribution thing right and so um that would be the your only whatever you're on on the digital distribution whether it be spotify itunes title Whichever ones you decide to sign up for and distribute your music to, then your digital distributor will give you that that money, right? But then other people they they'll go and they'll sign up for like a um, SoCan or yeah. ASCAP, like one of those, right? And then that that way you make sure that you'll get your money off of um, radio. You get your six dollars a spin if you're on the radio. You get money if someone's playing you in a different country. Like you'll get your money, right? That's the best route to take because then you'll get your money from DistroKid and from SoCan. That's what I try to do. Because you know, yeah. um, I even heard about merch now. They're trying to do something with merch where your merch counts as your album sales or something like that. <laughs> like, That's yeah, if your album is, if your, your old album's $10 and you sell a shirt for $40, that counts as four albums. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. But I what's know, interesting right? is that um, we talked about Drake before, but what's interesting is I feel like he made a point probably to cover a lot of genres because. I don't know if you know this or not, but like Canadian content, radio stations and like much music and MTV Canada, they have to have 35% Canadian content. So I feel yeah. like he, him and his people probably made a strategy. If we can cover these different genres and we're getting radio play on what, like flow and, and Virgin radio. And you're mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're on every fucking channel in every genre. He is, he is everywhere, man. He's smart with it. He is everywhere. Trust me, man. That guy's a fucking genius, bro. <laughs> But um, I think that was part of the strategy. But also, it's like, as a rapper, you only can do so much as a rapper. You only can rap. And people catch on to it for so long, especially with rap being more pop now, right? And um, Drake being mainstream, he's probably just trying to keep the genre going. Like, you see, like, um, a lot of guys are doing it. Tyler, the creator, is doing it and everything like that. Like, they're, they're blending. They're doing the genre blend, right? Because you only can go so far rap. I could, I, me right now, I could rap, 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 bro. And for like a couple of years, people are going to like it, but then they're going to always want something fresh, something new, a different sound from you, right? You gotta I'm the fresh. creator. I categorize as weird rap. <laughs> My no, he's, he's weird rap, but I'm just saying, like, I don't even listen to him. I'm just trying to, I was just trying to think of a yeah. good example, right? Yeah. But um, people, people that, even need these labels anymore, or is everybody right. independent? You said, is there any labels anymore? Do, do people even need the labels or have, have the rappers become the labels and they just sign people themselves? I, I tell people they don't need no label. Yo. I always tell people, but a lot of people, like some people need a label because they need help. Some people aren't, um, they're not forward driven or they, they, they want that handout. Right. But me, I always look at it like a, a fan base, like a numbers thing for anything. Right. If you want to get drafted into the NBA, you have to put up the best numbers in the NCAA, right? So as an underground artist, if you have the best numbers, you're selling a lot of merch, your numbers on Spotify and stuff are up, then you have a leg to stand on when you go to a label to ask for a deal. Instead of just begging a label from the jump, oh, develop me, make me an artist, pay me a little bit of money, right? Yeah, so me personally, I wouldn't sign until my numbers are up because I know if I go to label right now, they're going to chuck me whatever. But like... um. Say I'm already making six figures off my music and stuff like that. I have a leg to stand on when I go to them, you know? I have to. I can tell them, oh, I can fill this venue or I have this many fans that are going to buy this much merch when we put it out. And all I need is your machine behind me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just have, you have to have a leg to stand on in any, any type of situation you're going into, even if it's outside of music. Yeah. 
All right, one more thing, and, I, and I'll let you go. What's yes, sir. What's your main goal? Uh, let, let's say for the next year. What's what's the if if this happens, you've accomplished what you want to accomplish in twenty twenty one. Main goal for twenty twenty one. My main goal is 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 it's the consistency thing, man. Like yeah, like I want to be on everybody's list, especially when it comes to um locally or Canadian or Canadian list. I want to be on everybody's list. You know, and I already know I have the potential to do it. I already know where the music's at and stuff like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I want to. I want to. I want to. When I make the um the mascot, when I make the mascot into a teddy bear, man, I'm gonna send you one, bro, with a t-shirt <laughs> and stuff. You know, yeah. No, I, I'm a merch guy. I love yeah. I love supporting artists, and uh, you know, I wouldn't. I I think I I know what good rap sounds like. As silly as it might sound, I'm I'm on a news channel and all this other stuff. But I think I know good rap, and mm-hmm. I think you're really good. And the, the singles and the and the music videos and the collaborations you do with your other guys proves that. And when you have and you're putting out good quality music videos as well, and I think that really helps. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, bro. All yeah. right. Anything else? No, man, I was just trying to tell you about the, the beanbag, the, um, the, the, the Black Richie Rich beanbag. Oh, look for oh it. yeah. Like no, yeah. I want one of those yeah. shirts. Yeah, those I'm going to make the shirt, but I'm going to make the, I'm going to have the beanbags too <laughs> soon, right? So, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good-ass branding. Yeah. I really like the, the Black Richie Rich. <laughs> I laugh oh, every yeah, time you sure, post man. that. He's, he's cool, man. He's cool, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. yeah, that could be a good, th- that could be a big thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll see where it goes, right? You never know. But 2021 is just full of a lot of surprises, bro. And I look forward to seeing all the new content you got on your channel because I'm always watching and checking it out, too. You know what I mean? So, all yeah. right. Thanks a lot, man. You, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a good one. Okay. Peace. Who this shit is hard? Slap a hoe with 50 large. Have a seen stars, about to bulletproof all the cars. Them niggas mad, huh? Hating on a Scotia gang. Go get a bag, y'all. Mama know I'm bad losses.